Chris Weber, NBA on TNT analyst. Chris and Marv on the call for Game 1 and Game 2 between San Antonio and Oklahoma City. Coverage begins tonight, uh, continues tonight. It's Game 2 between the Cavs and the Hawks. TNT, the exclusive home for the 2016 Western Conference Finals. And uh, C. Webb joining us. Are you still fired up after the ending to Game 2, San Antonio and Oklahoma City? <laughs> well, after watching that Miami game uh, last night, yeah, I'm fired up with that half-court shot in the playoffs. So, uh, playoffs really starting to get interesting. So, yeah, definitely fired up over the last couple games. Some good games we played. But a lot of times, I mean, you were honest. You were upset at the end of that game. You're, you're watching this saying that should have been a foul like you didn't hold back from it. You're saying, you know, because a lot of times we'll wait and we'll just describe the action. You're saying, you know, that's a foul on Deion Waiters. The NBA has admitted they missed five calls in 13 seconds. Is this a good thing that we're admitting this, Chris? Is San Antonio going to feel better about this? No, you don't feel better. Um, And it was an incredible game, especially when you think about this. Remember, you know, game one, they had four plays where, uh, it was an and one, a foul on a three-point shot. Well, remember Aldridge and the fact that Ibaka fouls him and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, OKC pretty much has it and uh, they foul Ibaka. I'm sorry, they foul Aldridge. He makes three free throws. And so, yeah, the end, end was a lot. And if I could kind of explain it, because it's funny. I love being passionate and I love being a basketball player that gets to do analysis with the great like Marv. So I can really say what I want and be passionate and be truthful. And I know that I have one of the greatest voices ever uh, that can pull me back. But my job is just to be honest. And as a player, I've seen guys step on the line before. Mm So I've seen guys step on the line 50,000 times and never once has that been called. So for all the experts out there, I don't want to hear about someone stepping on the line like Ginobili. Secondly, if you look at the play that Harden hit, the game winner that Harden hit against Golden State that later the league said was an offensive foul, this was more blatant than that. It was just so obvious I just couldn't hold it. And when you're a player, see, everybody wants to talk about the first three quarters of the play. Come on, let's, let's be realistic. It does matter at the end of a game. It does. Like, only coaches and teams and guys that play can say it doesn't matter. Like, we fans shouldn't say that. We shouldn't get caught up in the coaches' speak because coaches and the team are not going to tell you what they're really feeling anyway. So we can't take the coaches' speak or Ginobili saying, oh, it's not why we lost the game. No, they're professionals. They're supposed to say that. But if you have a timeout or a set play, so if that was called a foul, one, it may have been a technical, number two, you change possession. It's not a frenzy. Uh, having a frenzy at the last second, a shot, a rebound, an air ball, somebody holding um, someone in the stands, maybe a foul on Aldridge, all that doesn't matter if that foul is called because now you get to set up and you get a shot by one of the best teams in execution. And so that's the simple thing. And it's funny because I talked to the referee out I, uh, flew back with a couple uh, of the referees, and I told them, I was like, man, my mom never texted me. She told me, baby, don't have a heart attack. And we, <laughs> I'm laughing with those guys because I know the pressure that they go through. I don't believe they would do that on purpose, but I'm part of the league. Like, we got to hold everybody accountable. If I can say, we all say, oh, Westbrook took a terrible shot. These guys don't have chemistry. You know, I hear guys always making, like, um, like, 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 um, Statements on guys' characters, but you can't say a ref missed a call. It's okay. Nobody's hurt. It's, it's more games. But, um, yeah, I called it like I saw it, and that's the one thing I'm going to bring to the game. I don't know how good I'm going to be in this, but I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to tell it like I see it. So, yeah, but, I, I, you know, it was a, a crazy ending, but, uh, man, an exciting game. But, Chris, you had an official looking at waiters give a forearm to create separation. I it's right there in front of you. I understand if you miss Ginobili's foot on the line and you don't want to call that. How do you look at that and go, uh, we've never seen that before, therefore we're not going to call it? I, Dan, I agree with you. That's why I didn't know what the uproar was about because we have the greatest officials. I do believe that in, in, the, in the four major sports. I, I really do believe that. I, I also believe we have the hardest, fast-paced moving, the best in-shape officials probably with hockey because you have to constantly keep moving. And it's okay to miss. It's like we're, everybody's dogging Kyle Lowry right now. Why, why is the narrative different in the game on players than on referees? It's not different on coaches. Everybody's equal. That's all I'm saying. Kyle Lowry's playing terrible right now. I can say that, and no one gives a gasp. But if I say a ref missed the call, or if you say that blatant <laughs> like he did, 
you know, it's, it's, it's these implications. And so I just like it because I'm a conspiracy theorist. And so I don't want to be part of anyone else's conspiracy. So I saw it. I called it as a player. I've been there. I know how it can affect. I know how the media says it doesn't matter. They still had a last second shot. And they're wrong because they've never been in that position before. They're, they're so wrong. That's, that's the one thing I hate about the narrative is that it does not matter up to that point. It does. It does not matter what happened the first three games or the calls. It doesn't. It matters where you are at this point and to be fair from this point on. And sometimes you can be fair and miss a call. They didn't try to miss it. So I, I have no problems with the referees missing a call, but they missed it. And as long as you say it, at least it, at least it gives some credence to the fact that I'm not making an excuse as a player. We still have to go on and win. I should have made a free throw in the first quarter. Maybe that would have helped. But, you know, give me a little bit of solace by telling the truth. That's all. And, and to be... Um, and to be transparent. But, Chris, does this come back to Tim Donaghy, that the NBA wants to be transparent because oh. Donaghy, the former official, said that, you know, games were fixed? Is that, is that what this is all about? I, I think, yes, and I think it's just about this day and age. The Internet, I think it's about fans having so much more access. If I would have had this access to my favorite players in 89 when the Pistons were playing and everything like that, you know, I would have been one of those guys screaming, oh, you know, the Celtics are cheating the Pistons for no reason. You know, it just would have just been on that bandwagon. So I, you know, I, I kind of get it. It's just from the Internet. But I, I do love the fact that I hope, and I hope NBA embraces the fact that it's still exciting. Uh, even the controversy, even this, we're talking about it. And it, it, as long as the fans know, hey, guys are missing calls, it's not. And I do think, yeah, b- believe me, uh, it's a lot about Donahue I would like to talk about. I do think a lot of it is, is from that time. But hopefully – uh, we just keep the fans' trust, which which we do, which is why I think the NBA wants to be transparent and say at the end of games that uh, they missed the call. You know, in football, my Lions, we always get hurt, especially with the touchdowns. Is it a touchdown? Is it not a touchdown? The catches with Megatron. And so I have to look at it like as a fan. I've never played a, a, a day in. In football, I love it when they say we missed the call because at least as a fan, it lets me hold on to the fact that, hey, maybe we got holes, maybe we didn't. But I don't mind the transparency. He's uh, Chris Weber, NBA on TNT analyst. But you were playing when Donaghy was officiating. Did you ever think that that there was something going on, that, that a game was fixed or that he was fixing a game? Um, I've, definitely, I've definitely played a game. Uh, I've played one game in which, yes, uh, something smelled very weird about the whole situation. But I didn't think that was the NBA and – um, and technicals and things like that. I never thought the NBA was purposely out to get me or purposely to make our team lose or purposely stay within the spread. Never felt that way. But was uh, Donaghy officiating? Time. Was Donaghy officiating that I'm, game? You know what? I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not sure. I think um, it would be easy to go back and look and see. But but I really haven't watched that game out of knowing that. I didn't foul out of knowing that it was offensive fouls on other players after seeing blood run down Bibby's nose after other things like that. So, uh, oh, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it's human nature for a guy to use their power, and I think that's why um, you always need someone to hold them accountable. And in basketball games, I remember, I remember the game I did that Golden State lost to Minnesota. Um, they they took a point away on a charge, and Golden State's at home and Minnesota takes the charge. It was a terrible call. And I didn't feel like the refs were cheating, but Minnesota needs the same respect as Golden State on this night. And I think that's what hmm. that I afford, that I look at, like the situation of both players. So I, don't, I really don't care who wins. I didn't win a championship, and if guys aren't going to give me their ring, <laughs> then <laughs> hey, all of them, go fight for it yourself. And so I just, um, I just like keeping the even kill because, Dan, you know, I've been on the team and the Wizards that played against the Bulls. All I wanted was for the refs to treat us fair because Jordan and those guys didn't need any help. And, of course, they didn't need any help, and they beat us. And then I was on teams where we played others, and we had the advantage. And, you know, we just want to make sure that it's fair and you give guys the same respect, whether they shoot 50% from the three-point line or 0% from the free-throw line. You don't want guys guessing. And so, uh, but, yeah, I've, I've been definitely in a game like that, and uh, I definitely believe it has happened before. But, no, that's not the culture or the way of the league, and I'm glad that they're staying transparent with fans. This was a game against the Lakers, and Bibby's bleeding, and uh, Kobe was not called for a foul, right? 
Yeah, I knew you were going to find it, so I wouldn't have to kind of <laughs> say it and sound like a whiner. Because that's the thing. I mean, you know, it happened and it's over. And, and as an athlete, so, so this is kind of my feel. As an athlete, yes, it happened. Um, I believe that. Now, as an athlete, so what it happened? What did we do? Make excuses? We lost. So it, that's the balance. And that's what you hear from Ginobili. That's what you hear from, you know, Popovich. But the, the, the fire is still there. You know, wanting to go back in time and play is still there, even though you can't do it. So it's not like you sit around whining or wondering, oh, what if, and oh, my God. But the truth is the truth. And so hearing uh, the NBA say, you know what, we missed that call, at least it just – just put the stamp on the narrative that this is what happened, but hey, you still lost what the baby's going to do. Get up, quit crying, and live another day. That's, that's basically what, what you're going to do. Uh, what are your thoughts on Chris Bosh wanting to play? I mean, they, the, the Heat are in a really tough situation here. Bosh, Bosh says he's okay, wants the Players Association to kind of help him with this fight. How does this play out? Man, that's a great question. You know, first of all, Dan, I don't know how serious – it is. If it is life-threatening like I've heard, then he just needs to sit the hell down and uh, sip some martinis and relax and cheer his team on because he's a good guy. He has a beautiful family, and everybody needs him here. Um, I do understand that if it's not that way and him wants to play, and I'll tell you why, because I know it's an 82-game season. I know you say a guy has a 15-year career, or, but out of those 15 years, really, he may only have two or three chances to win a championship. And being a great player like Bosh is and playing with LeBron and Dwayne Wade and others, he has more of a chance to get to those championships. But, you know, you don't know how much time he has. And some would say, and I may be one of those that say with a healthy Bosh, I'd love to see them play Cleveland. And I, 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 might, I might go with, with, with Miami in that situation. So I could see his sense of urgency when you look at, you know, the upset that they can make, the fact that nobody believes them, nobody put them in a championship race. You know, those are the type of things that goes through a player's head. It's not what people are saying about his shot. It's about him wanting to prove everyone wrong, him wanting to be there with his team. And so I get that passion. I understand him wanting to play if it is not um, life-threatening. Uh, but uh, it, it would be, man, it would be a heck of a series. If I Bob agree. Back with that team, the way they're playing now. Uh, before I let you go, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about Hoopmojis, the uh, app that launched yesterday that you're a part of. Oh, thanks. Well, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, um, Hoopmoji is just an app for kids to communicate. You know, it has all the three-point signs, the hoop signs, the shooting signs. It's just a way for kids to communicate and text. Uh, it's on 99 cents uh, at the iTunes store, and uh, we've been getting a lot of great feedback from kids from it. So if you know any kids and you want to just give them some – uh, stuff to text even more. It's not like kids need more uh, fodder to text with or more information. But if you just want to do that, it's really cool. It's going to be an app in all sports from basketball, track, football, baseball, where just the language of the kids is just talking sports. So thanks for giving me time on that, Dan. I didn't know you were going to let me talk about that. But it's cool. Hopefully people check it out, hoopmojis.com. It, it, yes, hoop and then M-O-J-I-S. It's uh, hoopmojis.com. Chris, keep stirring it up. Always great to talk to you. Thank you. Hey, thank you, guys. And I'll try to stay calm at the end just like I did. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I love the passion there. I loved it. It was honest. I, I appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, thanks, That's uh, Chris Weber, NBA on TNT analyst there. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.